Hey guys, JP Tech here. Back at it again with another CPU utilization test for the 8600K at 5.2 gigahertz. I'm using the ASUS Z370 Maximus 10 Hero motherboard with the ASUS Strix 1080 Ti at 1965 megahertz overclock. So the other day when I tested Battlefield 1 with this processor, I wasn't too surprised to see that the CPU utilization was very high being that it only has six cores and Battlefield 1 is a pretty CPU intensive game. What did surprise me though however is Call of Duty World War 2 CPU utilization is almost as high as Battlefield. These map sizes are pretty small and I didn't quite expect to see CPU utilization go over 80% and all the way up to 100% at times. Now I will note that even though CPU utilization is pretty high in this game, overall the experience is a lot smoother than what I was seeing in Battlefield 1. Now I'm pleased to say that this game runs very smooth overall. The only, the only problem though is the CPU utilization being so high does not leave much room for anything else to be running without affecting the gameplay. Overall, the, all the game settings are maxed out. Frame rate is staying very high, right around the 144 frames per second mark that I wanted to, to work nicely with my 144Hz monitor. The thing is though, is if you're trying to use something like OBS and use software encoding, you're, you're probably gonna take a pretty big hit in the way your game plays. I'm gonna do some testing on that later. At this point in my testing though, it's becoming very apparent that this processor does deliver high frame rates and you'll see that on a lot of benchmarks that exist on YouTube currently and on the rest of the internet. But what you're not seeing is in multiplayer action how high the utilization is. And that's something you want to consider when buying this processor. It's really, with a 1080 Ti, it's not leaving much headroom for the future. You know, I don't I don't expect it to go very long until modern games are completely taxing it, much like what I saw in Battlefield 1. I'm really interested to get the Ryzen 1700 system that I have set back up with the 1080 Ti so I can see how well this game utilizes that processor. I used that processor back during the beta and I got pretty good results. So I'm I'm expecting in the retail product that it should look better. The big thing with the 8600K that we have to realize though is what you see currently is what you get. There's not going to be improvements from the 8600K. So that, that kind of needs to be understood at the $260 MSRP and the around $300 that it's currently selling for. Whereas when you buy something like a Ryzen 7 1700, you spend about $300 on that processor, but it's not fully optimized as of, as of yet. So really you can, you can expect a lot more from a Ryzen 1700 going forward than you can from this 8600K. It, you know, it will give you the best some of the best frame rates out currently but as I've been seeing in multiplayer maps CPU utilization is is very high as far as using the 8600k with the 1080 Ti I really don't think it's the best combination I I think that if you already have an i7 a 4 core 8 thread i7 that's fairly modern like a 4790 and up probably uh, I would maybe just stick with that for now unless you're gonna go with something like the 8700k or maybe even a Ryzen if you're willing to kinda put up with the games that it doesn't play as nicely with until it is better optimized now if you're looking to get a 1080 Ti for 4k gaming and all you really care about is being around 60 frames per second or let's just say under 100 frames per second the 8600K is fine, and it does a really good job because of its high overclocking ability to do well in, in lower-threaded, single-threaded applications. 
But if you're looking to get over 100 frames per second, you know, more like 144 frames a second or even higher potentially at 1080 or QHD, like I've been using it, the 8600K is not going to give the best result overall. So definitely consider getting the 8700K for high frame rate gaming with the 1080 Ti. The 8700K is also going to ensure that you have some CPU power left over. So if you want to run OBS and do software encoding, you have that option. Uh, if, if games get more demanding in the future, which we can only expect that, the 8700K with its 12 threads is going to have that potential going forward. But the 8600K is already getting maxed out in games. So I can't advise spending $300 on a processor that to me is already out of date. But that's it for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I look forward to making more videos. Come back and check out JP Tech.